Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Abigail here, and believe it or not, it is the end of our series about prayer. So today we're going to finish things up, and we're going to really talk about how we can pray, what it is that God has done to make it where we can talk to Him. And God is so wonderful to make it possible for us to talk to Him, because we as humans, we are very sinful. And remember that sin is anything that you think, say, or do that breaks God's heart. And so God knew that about us. And when we chose, when Adam and Eve chose to make sin in the garden and to not follow Christ, not follow what God, the instructions God had given them, God made a big plan then in order to send Jesus to die for our sins so that we could be with him. From the time of the Garden of Eden, when we first sinned as humans, there was a long time before Jesus came. And God didn't want to not have a relationship with the people on earth in between that. And he needed to do things to make it where Jesus could come and die for our sins on the cross. And all throughout that time, God was still talking with people. That's the Old Testament. And all throughout the Old Testament, we've looked at a lot of times when people pray where they still talk to God, even though they were sinners. Because you see, God is something called holy. And holy means that he is set apart or different. And he is so pure and different and special, our sin can't be around him. And that's actually a really good thing. Because if our sin, if we were to be around him with our sin, he is so holy that it would be like a really bright light on us and we couldn't stand to be around him. We would probably not be able to survive around him because he is holy and we are sinful. But we also don't want God to change because him being holy, that is how he saves the world. That is how he takes care of the world. God has the power to love us and to take care of everything and he has the love to care enough about us. And so we don't want him to change, even though we can't have our sin in his holiness. But we still want to pray. We want to talk to God. We want a relationship with God. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to talk about what happened in the Old Testament and what God did for us in the New Testament now. So John Harrison, come on up here with me. All right. So what's your name? John Harrison, now it's back then. John Harrison Savage Bolton. He is going to be my helper today to finish up our lesson. And we're going to show you just a little peek at what God made, how God made it possible for us to be in his presence, for us to pray to him. And so we have all of these things up here. So John Harrison, first with this one. This is called the laver. Well, I guess I should say, in the Old Testament, God had his people build a big church called the tabernacle. But, you can go on and put your hands in. You can show them how you would wash your hands off in it. And the tabernacle was set up kind of where you had to go through different things in order to get to the sanctuary or the holy of holies where God was. And the first thing that you had to do, because remember, our sin can't be around God. And so before you could get to God, you had to deal with your sin. And so first they had something called a bronze laver. Can you say that? Bronze laver. Can y'all try and say that? It's kind of a funny word to say. Basically, it was a huge bathtub, which is kind of a casual way of saying it, but that's what it was. And so John Harrison's showing you how whenever people came to worship God, they had to start by washing. Now, obviously their bodies were dirty because they did a lot of stuff outside. They were walking around and dirt was everywhere. And so they probably needed to get cleaned up before they came to church anyway. But that's not what this was for. This was to remind you that just like your outside gets dirty with mud and bugs and other yucky things, your inside, your heart is dirty with sin. And so they would start by washing off at this laver. So John Harrison, you have done a good job showing them how to wash off. Next, they would come to the brazen altar. Can you say brazen altar? Brazen altar. Can y'all try and say that? And this is where they would light on fire their sacrifice. 
and fire burns away all the nasty parts of something. Sometimes it burns away the good stuff too, but this was to remind them that there's nothing good inside of us. You washing up some more? I just, I just need the money, please. Okay. This was to remind uh, them that they had to burn up everything, every part of their sin, and they had to give something to God in order to be able to go into His presence. They had to give a sacrifice. Now there were hundreds of different kinds of sacrifices or specific things in the Old Testament. Like if you um, told a lie to your neighbor, you had a specific sacrifice you had to give. What do you think it would have been as a sacrifice to give for telling a lie? All right, put that on the outside. Leave it alone. Put your hands down. So to give some, you may have to give different things. And there were a few other parts of the tabernacle or church. So this part here, this is called the curtain. You'll want to stand up so they can see you. There you go. Now this curtain, it separated the whole rest of the tabernacle from something called the Ark of the Covenant. Say that. Ark of the Covenant. Can y'all try and say the Ark of the Covenant? Now the Ark was a big, beautiful, special golden box. And in it were special things to remind the people, of God, people who God was. This curtain was a reminder that we are dirty and need our sins washed away and that something has to be given to God in order for us to be in his presence because of our sin. This curtain was that reminder that we just can't go into God's presence because he is holy and we are sinful. And so then Jesus comes and the Jews, they have been doing this practice and there's a lot more to it than even this. I'll tell you all about it someday, but this is complicated enough and there were lots of other parts of the sacrifices and worship and thousands of years go by Jesus comes did John Harrison did Jesus ever think say or do anything that broke God's heart no no he never sinned and so he was a, he was already clean he didn't need to get washed clean did he because his heart was clean so Jesus was already clean he didn't need to be washed up he had never sinned. There was nothing to wash away. He was also perfect enough to be able to be given to God for our sin. He could be that sacrifice. And so here's the curtain separating us from God. But do you know what happened while Jesus was dying on the cross? Jesus died on the cross and just as he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Just as he said... Just as he died, something amazing happened to the curtain. John Harrison, show them what happened to the curtain when Jesus died. It tore in half. Now, John Harrison, is there anything between us and God now? No. No. Jesus stands there in between us and God now. In, he, in the book of Hebrews, it says, you put it back up there for us to see, we can now come boldly into God's presence because of Jesus. Jesus tore that curtain because he was able to give himself as the sacrifice for our sin because he was already washed clean of the sin. That's how we can pray. We don't need to be afraid that God's going to get on to us or that we're going to be in trouble for praying. We can come to him because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, that he tore this curtain away. And so we don't need to be scared to come into God's presence. We get to come with courage. What's it mean to be bold? Think of your favorite superhero. It means that you're not afraid to do something. And so we should not be afraid to come before God. And so right now I'm about to get John Harrison to come and help me because we're going to make a craft to help us all remember to come with courage and boldness before God. So here's a craft for you guys to make. All that you need is a big piece of paper, something to color with, glue or tape, and either we grab streamers, but you could also use string or other strips of paper or even fabric, whatever you have that would work to be able to put onto a piece of paper. And so John Harrison, I wrote on here, come boldly before the throne.
which is what that verse in Hebrews says and talks about. Mm -hmm. I also put a sticker of a cross here. If you have one, you can put it there, but otherwise draw a cross. And so we wrote coming boldly before the throne, which is what we're able to do because of Jesus. So John Harrison, you go ahead and color that and decorate it the way you want, okay? Mm -hmm. But I want this big one. So John Harrison and I, before the video started, we took, guys, oh, careful, we took these streamers and we tore them into long strips. So we have them all ready for the next part that we're going to do. Mommy, um, I'm going to make a cross. That would be perfect, draw around that cross. So you can decorate your picture however you want. And whatever you get for this next part just needs to be something you're able, able to tear. Whether it be some string that you could cut or a paper you could tear or something like that. So that's what you'll need it for. I'm going to go on, and you'll need the strips to be longer than the height of the paper. So the paper's that tall, and you'll want to make sure that the string or the streamer or paper that you have is longer than that. But they can be all different lengths. They don't have to be the same size. Mommy, do you like my dog? I do like it. Is that decorated enough for right now? And you'll decorate it more later? What we're making is representing the curtain in the tabernacle and the temple. And it was full of colors. It had reds and golds and purples and blues. And so we grabbed a bunch of different colors so that way we can kind of show one, how beautiful it was and just kind of how the curtain might have looked. And John Harrison's using a lot of colors on his picture too. I want it to be a rainbow. Rainbow, that'll be perfect. All right, so you're gonna take your picture. So here's the picture side that you've drawn and you're going to lay that down on towards the table. Mommy, and I I'm going to put... No, I know how to do gold. I do a line right at the top of the paper on the long edge. There you go. Squeeze it. Good. Do you need some help to get it out? Is it being difficult? Yes. You did really well, though, but here. I'll, we'll do teamwork on it. Oh, it is being difficult. Hopefully, your glue's not being as difficult. Maybe you should use tape if it is. All right, so John Harrison, you pick a piece, and when you glue these on, you want to lay them forward. And so you have your glue up here at the top, the picture's on this side. You want to lay it this way, where the long end is going away from the picture. So here you go, John Harrison, we lay them down like that. Can you press it in? What color next? Um, Bobby, another green. Another green? All right, no, lay a blue. A blue. All right, so now we have them all glued on the back and they're hanging over in front of the pretty picture you've colored. But, it, John Harrison, is the curtain there anymore between us and God? No. no. Jesus tore it. So now what you can do is you take those strings or paper and you are going to tear it up so that you Mom, can see. Mommy, hold it up like that. Here, I'm going to hold it like this because it's covering the picture. And you tear a couple of these. Let's lay it down so that we can do it together. So this is how it looks now. It has all the torn pieces where you can remember how we can go boldly before the throne of God. And so right now, I'm going to pray because we're able to do that. We're able to come before God and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for everything that you have given us. Thank you for being perfect and for being holy. And thank you for not changing. Thank you for making a way for us to be washed clean of our sin and for us to be able to come into your presence and pray and spend time with you. You are a good, wonderful God, and we are so grateful for you. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you again.